classic New York style pie fired two ways. Get it ready, because this is where your balls are going. I mean, that looks pretty glorious. That looks pretty glorious. <laughs> All right, welcome to Kitchen Captain. I'm Ian Walsh, and today we are going to step back in the ring with pizza. Last time we made a delicious Neapolitan pizza, but we did have a bit of a shocker with the dough making process that we learned a ton. I'll put a link to that video above and below so you can avoid my stupid mistakes. Whoa, 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 all right. Scratch that one. But today we're gonna get back on the good side of pizza with a classic New York style pie fired two ways. One with the ease of gas, and the other with the flavor of a good old fashioned wood fire. We're gonna do both of them on my new favorite cooking rocket ship, the Gosney Dome. The most versatile outdoor cooking oven on the planet. Let's go. Okay, all good pizza starts with the dough, so let's get into it. First step is get yourself a scale. This will make this much easier. So I'm gonna put in about 450 grams of regular room temp water and then add some warm water to that to make sure it gets up in temperature. And we want 665 grams. It's kind of like filling a gas tank up if you're just trying to nail the numbers. Really sounds like you're taking a pee. Add one gram of fresh yeast if you have it, or about a quarter teaspoon of dry instant yeast. Okay, next up we have 625 grams strong bread flour. Oh, that was almost bad. Almost was shot everywhere. And then our next flour up is double O flour, double zero flour, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna add 325 grams of that. I'm just trying to get the flour and the water kind of talking. One time I tried to fill this up with double the recipe and kind of just lumped everything in. And then when I turned it on, it just made like a huge cloud of flour all over my kitchen and just spilled it out. So I like to get it a little bit incorporated as I'm going here. And now we have our last flour that's going into our mixing bowl. We're gonna do 100 grams of whole wheat flour or wholemeal flour, 28 grams of salt. I'm using kosher salt. You can use fine sea salt straight in. Now we're gonna let this mix on a low speed for about three to four minutes. Get your little dough scraper and kind of get everything that wasn't really partying with the big glob of dough. We're not trying to make dough to have it just hang out on the sides of the mixing bowl, are we? We're trying to make dough to make pizza. Now we're gonna measure out 25 grams of olive oil. Good olive oil, mind you. We're gonna add that to our dough and let it sit and rest for 10 minutes. That is good olive oil. Be patient, let everything relax for a little bit, and then we're gonna get back to it. Okay, a little bit of magic. We lost the cutting board, lost some of our other ingredients, but we let this rest for about 10 minutes and we're gonna turn it on a low speed and let it go for another minute or two to incorporate the olive oil. Slippery little beast. Looking pretty good. Move this to a clean work surface. Don't go walking or dancing on your countertops before you lay out your dough ball on there. Form this up into a good little clean ball. Don't really need to knead it at all. I guess that's a lot of needs in one sentence. Okay, we got our pretty little dough ball here. Now we're gonna cover it and leave it to rest at room temperature for one hour. Just let it do its thing. Now, as beautiful as this dough ball looks, we're gonna break this down into about seven pizzas. We're gonna aim for like 240 to 250 grams. That was way off. That was like 350. Just working our way down. And once we get the weight we're looking for, put them on like a lightly oiled work surface. Definitely not nailing the measurements here. I've got some work to do in that department. Let's actually try to get one. 191, way off. Okay, we nailed it, seven. We have seven nice little piles of dough that we're gonna shape and form into these beautiful little pizza balls. Get a sheet pan, grease that thang up with a little olive oil, and get it ready, because this is where your balls are going. We're gonna take our pile of dough, put your thumb in the middle, and then fold over. Fold over, 
you can feel it kind of start to work and get a little bit tighter. And after that goes, then you just lift it up and start pushing my fingers in and rolling the top of the dough ball over with my palm. Just work it into a nice little taut ball and then get it down onto the counter and actually shape and form this thing with the edges of each hand. Pinch the bottom, very similar to a dumpling. Twist that thing off, one beautiful little ball. In comparison to the last time we went down this road at the Neapolitan Pizza, it felt like we just dipped our hand into a bucket of dough and had it just caked everywhere. The oil makes this process a lot easier. If you're new to pizza, I highly recommend this process to dip your feet into the water. It's a fun recipe to kind of work your way through and experiment with. I mean, nobody ever complained about trying a bunch of different pizzas. We have our seven beautiful little dough balls, and now we're gonna cover these in saran wrap or a damp towel and let them proof in the refrigerator for 18 to 24 hours. Tomorrow we are gonna eat delicious pizza and I will see you then. Okay, when I say ease of use for our gas version of our New York style pizza today, this is what I mean. Pop our little rain cover lid off, turn on our gas, let that start working its way into the dome. And then we're gonna take this knob right here, press it in. Should hear a bunch of clicking, which I do. We're gonna turn this knob still pressed in 90 degrees to the left until we get this little pilot light. That is gonna be able to fuel this thing up as soon as I let the gas hit it and fire this oven up. I mean, we're talking ease of use, we mean it. Pretty damn simple. Our dough balls were in the fridge for about 24 hours and we pulled them out to sit at room temperature for about an hour. And now we're gonna make our sauce. I'm gonna take a 28 ounce can of tomatoes. San Marzano, no idea if that's how you pronounce that place, but sounds like it reads, I guess. I like a pretty simple pizza sauce. A little bit of salt right into here and then get an immersion blender. And you do want to go down before turning this thing on because if you do it up close to that lid, it's definitely going all over you. And no promises, this still might go all over me right now. And I'm just trying to aim for like the bigger chunks and push them down and give them a quick blend. Pop this little hog off. Mmm, that was good. Okay, now it's pizza making time. So we're gonna select one of our premium dough balls here. And I have about a 50-50 blend of double O flour and semolina. Plop this in, give the counter a little dusting. Out comes the pizza. Trying to get a little consistent edge on there. And I'm just gonna pick it up and let gravity do its thing as I work this out. I guess what I'm kind of looking for in this right now is to try to not have it too thick in certain areas and too thin in others. So we're kind of aiming for about yay size because we don't want that thing flopping over the edges of it. Just gonna work this out a little bit more and we'll be good to go. And there's a bunch of little air bubbles in here as you lay it back down under your work surface. And you can knock all those out by just giving the thing a little spanking. I think we're about good here. Relatively round, looks like a pizza. All right, now let's get to it. I'm gonna take a scoop of our sauce. I do not have a ladle. I think I went camping and mysteriously disappeared. Could very well be in one of my brother's kitchens. We have low moisture mozzarella and we took a whole block and grated half of it and then sliced the other half. Kinda rip this up and place it with the sliced cheese and the grated cheese and the oils from the pepperoni and the red from the tomato sauce, it'll kind of make this that classic orange tint on the top of it that you might get with a really good slice of New York pizza. Kind of get this onto our pizza peel. That was almost a big mistake. Definitely get some flour and semolina onto your peel because that thing mixed with a little moisture from the dough and that tomato sauce will make a nightmare. You go to slide the thing off into the pizza and it just folds end up with a calzone instead of a pizza. Get it underneath, nice and easy. Now we're just gonna spread this out to fit our pizza peel nicely. Put our pepperonis on. Let's get this thing in our oven. Just caught myself on the cabinet handle. 
We're cooking at about 645 degrees. Before you slide this in, give it a little shake, a little shimmy, make sure it's not stuck to your peel. Get it in, be assertive, off you go. And you wanna give it like 30 seconds to a minute before you touch this thing, I think, because you want the bottom to kind of set and then it makes it a lot easier to spin and work on it. So the cooking time for our New York pizza is gonna be a longer duration than its cousin, the Neapolitan pizza. That pizza blazes out in like 90 seconds. We're going for like four to six minutes, somewhere in that range for this one. I'm just kind of pulling it out and giving it a little spin to make sure everything's cooking evenly. Gas pizza is done, was fast and easy. We built a little Jenga stack of small kindling pieces of local Keave wood from here on Maui. We're gonna let this thing come back up to temp and then fire off another pizza and then we'll taste the two. My gut is telling me the gas is gonna have a hard time battling the wood for taste, but the convenience of being able to just fire that thing up and rip through a pizza with the gas is incredible. Let's dress this thing up. You know the drill. And I did find myself a ladle. And I think I also wanna avoid over cheesing it. I could see how that could be a real problem for some people, including myself. Put too much, this thing gets too heavy. It's just like a floppy hog. Hoping these things cup up beautifully and we are off to the races. We took out some of our wood and we had to cool this thing down. It was rocking at about a thousand degrees. Right now we're at 680 degrees Fahrenheit. Before we go in, a little shake and bake and then nice and assertively in we go. Okay, just like our other pizza, we're gonna give the, ow, hot. I guess it should be. Give that a spin. Let's give our undercarriage a little check. Oh, it's looking pretty good. I think we're done. I mean, that looks pretty glorious. That looks pretty glorious. All right, it's time. We have the gas New York style pizza. We have the good old fashioned wood fired New York style pizza. Let's see what we're working with. You can see a beautiful rigid firm body, the undercarriage looking stellar. That semolina does really help. And we did get that nice orange tint, didn't we? So this is the wood fired pizza. Let's do it. That's an absolute banger. I mean, the wood in the Gosney Dome is an absolute power move. Get our crown jewel here from our gas version. Solid undercarriage. Not quite what the, the wood one was, but looks delicious. Let's just get right down to business. That is really good too. A pretty similar. You just taste the smoke from the wood on this one. That dome can pump them out either way. Crust is a must. Being that the wood fired pizza is such a power move, I have to go if this is the winner. That is unbelievable too though. You can see that orange color I was talking about earlier. We learned a couple things here. This process of making the dough for this style of pizza was a lot more forgiving than its Neapolitan cousin. We learned you can cook a pizza in the Gosney Dome on gas and with wood. We also learned that if you cook with wood, do not overload the wood because that thing will dive up to a thousand degrees in the blink of an eye. And I guess ultimately we learned that Gosney Dome is a real deal. And if my dumb ass can make this good pizza, and if my dumb ass can make pizza that tastes this good, then that pizza oven is next level. Thanks for watching.